Wow. Holy cow. There are a lot of different types of drones available. I, oh, hey, it's Matt Haynes. And if you're in the market for your first drone or you're looking to buy a gift drone for somebody, this is overwhelming. And, and look at the price ranges. It's anything from $20 to $3,000, where do you start? But good news, I'm gonna help you out. I'm gonna help you make a decision, but I'm gonna help you the right way. If I just gave you a list of drones to buy, well, that's not that helpful because I don't know your particular needs. Instead, I'm gonna reveal the four essential features that all drones need to have so that you can have a great flying experience. And then you'll be armed with the tools to make your own decisions. And at the end of the video, I will suggest some drones in different price ranges so that you have a starting point. By the way, no one is paying me to recommend any particular drone. No one has sent me any free merch. This is all based on my personal experience and research. Now looking at the various price ranges, yeah, they can get really expensive. But here's something to consider. If you spend $500 on a drone, you get to fly a $500 drone. If you spend $100 on a drone, you might be throwing that $100 away. And the reason is that drone might just keep going and never come back. Roughly speaking, the more money you spend on a drone, the more features it's going to have to prevent you from crashing into something or it getting lost. However, the tricky part of course is finding out how much money is just enough. Which brings us to our first feature that every drone should have, GPS. Now you use GPS or global positioning system all the time. Whenever you're using maps to cross town and find a new location, that's GPS. And a lot of drones have GPS built in. This is really important because it tells your drone where it is on the planet. If it loses signal with your controller, it can hopefully find its way back home. Now more sophisticated drones can integrate maps on your phone to show you where the drone is and get a better sense of it. They can also log the drone's last position if it crashes somewhere. But even if it just has basic GPS to get your drone back to the starting point, that is really important. However, you wanna make sure the drone's GPS is reliable because if it loses connection with your controller and it loses GPS signal, then that drone is just gonna keep on flying until it smacks into something or loses power and falls to the ground, probably in some farmer's field a mile away. So how do you make sure that the GPS is reliable for a particular make and model of drone? Well, that's actually not that hard. Just go on YouTube, search for the make and model of that drone that you're looking at. Now, not all reviews are honest. Mine are. However, if the reviewers are saying, hey, the drone flew away from me and never came back, that's a good sign the GPS probably doesn't work very well. The second essential feature that all drones need to have is a camera, one that will show you a live feed as you're flying it. Now, even if you never take a video in the air, even if you never shoot a photo in the air, you still need to see where you are are. And if you don't have that live feed, that visual feedback, even flying across the park could be risky. As we saw before, drones come in a variety of price ranges and many of them are expensive because of the camera they have inside them. They are meant to be flying video cameras. And I admit, I'm a little bit of a snob when it comes to drones. I view drones as cameras with wings, essentially. So that's my main purpose. That's not everyone's purpose though. So you have to ask yourself, am I buying a drone because I want amazing photography from the air? Or am I buying a drone because I wanna fly it around and have fun? If the latter, then you don't need a good camera, you just need a functioning camera. Now the cheaper drones will just send the live signal back to your phone and the drone app will record it right then. However, you're gonna have dropouts and you're gonna have glitches and things like that because you're relying on the live feed and sometimes that's not very consistent. More expensive drones can record the video and photographs internally on a mini SD card so that when you get back, you have the full resolution images. So if you're doing any aerial photography aerial videography, that's a must have. This is kind of a rough estimate, but $300 seems to be about the minimum viable price you can pay and get good images. Anything below that and you get drones that have really shaky footage, it's not stabilized, it's jerking around, and you get this 
chromatic aberration on these cheap cameras, which is like this purple edges and stuff, and it just looks awful. Now, if you are just taking photographs, the shakiness may not be a big deal, but the image quality is still important. Watch out for dishonest or misleading ads from drone manufacturers, though. They'll claim the camera is better than it is, or they'll kind of worded in a way that misleads you. So here's an example. When talking about resolution, which is kind of how detailed the image is, you've got different resolutions. You've got 4K, which is better than 2K, which is better than 1080p. So I have seen a lot of ads for drones that say 4K camera. Yeah, it's 4K for the photos, but only 1080p for the video. So that means the video is gonna be a lot less resolution. So if video is important for you, dig a little deeper and, and find out for sure. Now resolution is easy for manufacturers to talk about because there's numbers, but Resolution isn't the be all and end all of camera quality. In fact, you can have a 4K camera that looks like garbage. So again, YouTube is your friend. Search for the particular drone model. Look at how the video looks and the photos look. If it doesn't look good and that's important to you, move on. And the other problem that drones experience with cameras is shakiness because they're up in the air. They're moving around trying to keep them one position and the wind's buffeting them and all that. And the cheaper drones don't have any way to counteract this. They don't have any stabilization. And so the footage is really jerky. As you move up the price ladder, you'll get drones that have some sort of electronic stabilization built into the camera. This is just basically moving pixels around to stabilize the image. This works okay if things are relatively still, but if it's really windy or if you're flying flat out, you're gonna get some weird wobbly images and it still may not be acceptable for video. For photography, it's good enough. If you want nearly perfect stabilization in your videos, your drone needs to have a gimbal. And this is a set of arms that the camera sits on. The computer inside the drone compensates for the movement of the drone by adjusting the camera back and forth. And obviously this costs more money. Now, do you need a gimbal to fly a drone? No, but if you're doing videography in the air, yeah, you do need a gimbal. The next essential feature that you need is proper phone integration with your drone. Now, most drones are gonna show the image on the phone and that's great, but the type of integration and the quality can be really important. Let me explain. A lot of inexpensive drones use your phone's Wi-Fi to actually connect and talk to the drone. And that can be a problem because the signal from your phone's Wi-Fi isn't that strong, doesn't reach that far, and there can be a lot of lag. There can be as much as like four or five seconds from you hitting the controller to the drone doing something about it. And that can be a problem if you're about to hit a tree. More expensive drones use five gigahertz technology and the controller is what actually connects with the drone. It has big antennas built in and it's got a strong signal much stronger than your phone would have and yes it'll connect with your phone but just to display the image or to do non-flying commands i'm not going to cover every single feature that you might find in a drone because many of them are not important for the first time drone buyer however there is one more feature that i think is essential that is battery life. Do not buy a drone that has a battery life that is rated less than 20 minutes. Drone manufacturers have been known to overstate their battery life. So if you see a drone that's rated for 20 minutes, it possibly was tested in really ideal conditions like indoors, no wind, just hovering there, or they just may have made the number up. So if you see a drone that is rated for 20 minutes, assume 15 minutes. But if you have a 15 minute battery, you're not gonna fly it for all 15 minutes, otherwise it's just gonna crash very far away from you. So now you're down to 10 minutes. And if you have a 10 minute battery or 10 minute flight time, your launching and landing is taking as much time as you're flying, and that's frustrating. Read the ads carefully. Some drone manufacturers will put two batteries in the package and then they'll claim the flying time is twice as long. But guess what? You cannot change a battery in mid-flight. Now let's talk about some possible drone options based on your particular budget. I just wanna reiterate, no one's paying me anything to say this. No one's giving me free stuff. However, if there's a drone you find interesting, would you click the affiliate link in the video notes because it doesn't cost you anything and it helps me continue to bring you great content. So I'm gonna start by talking about drones that are $300 and up because that's kind of the minimum viable threshold for decent quality video. The least expensive drone that I would consider for 
relatively serious photography or videography is the DJI Mini SE. And it comes in at about $300. It's got a 2K camera and a real 2K camera, none of this, you know, fudging and, and mysterious numbers thing. Now the quality of the camera isn't quite as good as higher priced drones as one would expect, but it's pretty decent. The camera is certainly good enough for YouTube and other social media channels, and more importantly, it has all the sophisticated features that DJI drones have. <laughs> At around $450, you can get a DJI Mini 2. It's got a 4K camera. It's got a lot of sophisticated features in it, and it's really light. I can pack it in a backpack, and uh, it's great for traveling with. If you go up in the DJI line a little bit, you get the Mini 3 Pro, which has a great camera. It's got uh, collision sensing, and it's got a lot more features. And above that, you get much bigger drones with much bigger price tags. You got multiple thousands of dollars for some of them. They have wonderful cameras that are cinema grade. They've got 360 degree collision detection. They've got features like following, so you can follow your car or if you're running down the trail, lots of cool features lots of money. Now, DJI is the biggest manufacturer of retail drones that I'm aware of. However, there are other high quality drone manufacturers out there. For example, Autel Robotics has a great line of drones. They have the Evo Nano and the Evo Nano Plus that are both under $1,000. And in the over $1,000 price range, they've got the Evo Lite, the Evo Lite Plus, and the Evo 2 Pro. Skydio also makes a range of drones and their entry level drone is just under $1,000. It has a stellar camera and it has some other cool features that drone manufacturers don't have either, such as being able to plan waypoints and plan its flight path, path, flight path, flight path ahead of time. So you basically can't go wrong with anything from DJI, Autel, or Skydio, but they're all really expensive. So what if you're looking for something under $300? When you're spending less than $300, you do still have options. However, you're going to sacrifice something and it's usually going to be collision avoidance and camera quality. You're also gonna have to weed through a lot of unknown manufacturers that you've never heard of before. Ruko makes the U11 Pro, which is about $260, and they claim it's a 4K camera, the video is really 2K, but that's still plenty of resolution. And you can also record all of this in an SD card internally while you're flying. The U11 Pro has GPS built in. It does connect with your phone using the phone's Wi-Fi. It has a return to home feature, and uh, it'll also keep track of your drone in case it gets lost. This drone does struggle to maintain its position in high winds and the camera's not on a gimbal. So when the drone is being kind of knocked about by winds, you can see it in the image. You get kind of this rolling shutter effect. The image can be warped a little bit. So be aware of that. For even cheaper, you have the Tensanx. I think I'm pronouncing that right. It's the Tensanx TSRC A6 drone for about $170. They claim it's a, a 4K camera, but it's really for video, it's 1080p. Also, the image quality isn't that great, but again, it's about $170. This drone also has GPS built in. It will return home if it loses signal with your phone and your controller. It comes with two batteries, and in the ads, they do that little battery trick thing where they claim it's twice as much. The battery is rated at 23 minutes. If any of these drones I've talked about sound interesting, please use the affiliate links in the video notes. It would really help me. Hopefully I've taken away some of the stress associated with buying a drone. I've noticed though that flying a drone can be stressful as well, especially for the new drone pilot. So I've put together a video that will help you get over that stress of flying a drone and get you moving towards a more relaxed flying experience. So take a deep breath and click right here. Come on.